if you're anything like me, you might have hundreds of DVDs stacked up in your house. I must admit, with the inexpensive price of DVDs, I wonder why I'd go to the movies anymore. But we have plenty of them. Children's movies, family movies, old movie musicals, all sorts of things. Well, we're going to talk about some ways that you can watch DVDs other than simply taking out the disc and putting it into your DVD player. The first thing we're going to talk about is some of the terminology associated with it. Because if we're going to do anything with our DVDs, the first thing we're going to do is to rip them. To rip a DVD means to copy the movie from the DVD to your computer. To actually put the DVD into your computer and make a copy. Now, that doesn't sound like it would be too tricky, but it will involve some specialized software that we're going to be using. The word copy, on the other hand, is used to mean that once the movie is on your computer, you're going to copy it onto some other device. For example, I have here a Nook. Things that I can put inside a Nook include little SD cards, so I will be copying the movie from my computer to this card to put inside the Nook. Another item I can copy from would be this little flash drive. That would be a copy. So first we're going to rip, which means from the DVD to the computer, and then we're going to copy, which means from the computer to some other device. Now, interestingly, this next word here, I wrote decode or encode. What that means is that the DVDs, as they are on the little disks, are generally encrypted. Remember, the movie studios and such don't necessarily want to make it easy for us to make copies of the DVDs. Now, what we're talking about here is the fact that you already own the DVD and you're making a copy for yourself so that you can watch that same DVD if you're on the road, on a vacation, or whatever. So what we're doing here is perfectly legal and within your licensing rights because we're making a copy of the DVD for you. However, since there are so many problems with movie piracy and such, the movie studios make it as difficult as possible. That's why I wrote about decode and encode. The DVD will be encrypted, and we're going to need some special software so that we can break the encryption, rip it from the DVD to our computer, and then finally copy it from the computer to some other device, like a little flash card, or over here, I have an external hard drive. Something like this can hold hundreds of movies, and it's wireless, which means any computer in your house or television set can then watch the movies that are on here. So the possibilities are indeed limitless. Down below that, I have some odd terms, these little three-letter words that are movie file types. You're going to see this when we work with some of our software, which means that after the name of the movie, you might see one of these three-letter symbols. These are important not because you need to be encrypting or encoding things yourself, but because if you see them, I just don't want you to worry about it. And different devices like to use different things. So we might make a selection for them. MP4 is generally the movie type of choice for things like iPads or tablets and things like that. So at some point, we are going to want them to be in an MP4 format. Well, we know about ripping, copying, decoding, encrypting, and finally our movie types. Let's get started on an actual movie. I'll take our movie here. And the first thing I need to do is to rip the movie. I'm going to put the disk into my computer. As I mentioned, because of all of this encoding and encrypting, it's not as simple as if you just had a Word document or something. We do need some specialized software to do this. The good thing is the specialized software is available for free. There are all sorts of different things. I happen to be using a Mac computer, so we're going to be using a program called Mac the Ripper right now. There are other programs such as Handbrake or other DVD rippers that are available for free. 
And if you go over to technicallyspeakingtv.com and visit our website, you'll see links to all the different programs that you can download and do this at home. So here we go. I put in my movie, and you'll see my movie showing up right there. If I simply double-clicked on that movie, it'll instantly start playing The Lion King. Well, that might be fun and all, but let's see if we could do something else with it. I'm going to open up one of those DVD Ripper programs. I have one right here. Mac DVD Ripper Free Edition. I always do like free. <laughs> now, all DVD Ripper software looks pretty much the same. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. The first thing they ask is to please click DVD button to load the DVD disc. I'll do that right now. Here is the DVD button. And they ask me if I would like to load The Lion King. Sounds good. And I'll just hit OK. They're just going to analyze my DVD for a moment. You'll see that there are lots of different segments to this DVD. Most of the time, we only want one of them, and it's always the big one. If you look here, you'll see some things like the timing. This one's 33 seconds, 32 seconds. We want the nice long one, which is an hour and 59 seconds. That's the whole movie. Some of these other ones might just be a little advertisement or something. If we look down here, you'll see some options. I can convert this to an MP4 format. I can convert it to iTunes, to an MOV format, to just the music, to an MPEG format, or an FLV format. Now, when I mentioned those formats before, each device you have prefers them in a different format. Now, I'm going to be putting them here on my Nook and on this tablet, and I know from the owner's manual that the MP4 format is best. If I were going to be playing these back on my iPhone or iPad, I might choose iTunes and it will automatically convert this movie to that format to add it to my iPod. So it's pretty self-explanatory here. I'm on the MP4 format, and all I would have to do is click the Start button. You'll see it going through here. Now, we're not going to wait for the whole time. I must admit this movie is, I think we said, an hour and 59 minutes. So it's going to take a long time for it to rip. You can go and have a cup of coffee or something. But it's going through right over here. And when it's all finished, it'll be loaded onto your computer. Once it's loaded onto the computer, we could talk about putting it onto another device. The devices I have here include this giant external hard drive. But I think I'm going to work with these two smaller devices today. This is a flash drive. I'm sure you've seen something like this. Once you put the movie onto the flash drive, you'll very simply be able to take it if you have a computer that has a slot just for that and put it in. You'll be able to watch all of your movies right there on the flash drive, very simply. The other option, if you're using a Nook or some other device that uses SD cards, now, what's interesting with a Nook is it actually doesn't use an SD card. It uses a micro SD card. Here's the micro SD card. When you buy a micro SD card, it automatically comes with this shell or adapter. Because you can't put this little tiny thing into your computer, you'll put it into the adapter. Now, I'm going to stop our conversion here. You could see we're only up to 5%. It's going to take the rest of our show to do this, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. However, what it did for me is it opened this folder with MP4s. These are all the movies I've ripped in the past. Lots and lots of movies, television episodes. I told you, I have a big collection at home. Once you've completed the ripping and it all lands in this folder, let's see about putting it onto this little card. 
Again, I have the tiny cord and I have it inside the adapter. I'm going to slide this into my computer here. Let me just clear off some of these things in the window. And right there is a little picture of the card I just slid in. If I double click on it, you'll see I have different files. My files, videos, and I've already added two movies. Despicable Me and How I Met Your Mother were movies from my collection that I've already added to this card. As I mentioned, this picture here is showing all the movies I have. If I'd like to add another one, I could simply click on it, hit copy, and now in this window was my little SD card, and I'm just going to hit paste. And here comes our next movie, all ready for us to start watching. That'll load up in just about a moment, and then we can put it in and start watching. Devices like this are great for the car, for long trips, if you're going away, or even if you just would prefer to watch movies in bed without craning your neck. Once it's loaded up, we're just going to remove the card and slide it in. On a Nook, the little micro SD card fits right into this slot here. So as soon as I put it in, you'll see how tiny it is. I'll shut all of these windows down. And we'll take out our card. I think they're still finishing that last copy. Okay, here's our SD card adapter. If I slide out the little one and put it into the hole, and power it on. On a Nook, as on many of these devices, once the card is in, you'll see it right here in the corner. There's a little tiny picture of a card. SD card inserted, click to browse. And they're just searching for the card contents there. Let me just restart that. As I mentioned, your other option, and we would have done it the same way, is this flash drive. If we had our window open again with all of our movies and I stuck in our flash drive, you're going to see it appear right here on the screen. That's our flash drive. Let's see what kind of movies we already have. There we go. Lots of them. A flash drive like this can hold maybe 25 different television episodes, movies, things like that. Certainly enough for a long car trip. And once it's in, it's the most portable device you can have. I'll take this one out. We could look at both of our movies. Okay. Our nook is just warming up so we can watch our movie. And then I've got this one, too. This will be the movie buff place. My files, videos, and there's our movies. Let's take a look. That was pretty easy. What was it, about two minutes from there to our screen? The same thing would work on this. Except this one, we're putting in our flash drive. Put it in. 
open up the folder. Now this one has a lot more movies than that last one. But once I put it in, we can start watching. And there it goes. So those are quick and easy ways to take your DVD collection, put them onto another device, and get them onto your portable computers to watch on vacation or in the car. Now remember, our terms were RIP was from the DVD to the computer, and COPY was from the computer to our flash drive. Enjoy your DVDs.